guys, in, in the last session, we have gone through the concept of standalone system, the T TM standalone system or TM decentralized system, how the scenario would be working, how a system can connect with the source system, which can be ECC or S4 HANA system that uh, we have seen that how the flow would be there, how there would be in between uh, OTRs or DTRs documents would be there, which would be serving as a uh, uh, transport requirement for standalone TM system and the transport planning and the freight unit building would be happening based on the DTR and OTR, which would be available only as a display and only as a requirement for the standalone system. So we have seen that how, uh, what would be the overall flow and how the integration would be there between the both of the systems. And we have also seen in system that what kind of configurations will be required to do same. Then we have jumped into another topic, which is uh, freight, uh, uh, freight unit. So we discuss about what is freight unit, for what purpose it would be used and how you how we can uh, uh, build freight units what would be the logic to do the uh, logic to build freight units what kind of configurations would be uh, uh, there and what what kind of scenarios would be there based on that we would be we, we would be required to create different kind of freight units we also discussed about the linkages between the requirement documents otr dtr or delivery and the freight units uh, and the linkage between the freight units to the next uh, freight documents. That part also we have seen and we have seen the configuration in the system. So till that part we have covered in our last session. Now before proceeding ahead, uh, we'll take a quick pause to check if we have any questions on the previous session. Yeah, OTR and DTR only relevant if you have uh, um... Uh, if you have SCM or uh, TM separated from the main landscape, right? That's what we understood uh, in the last session. Yes, that's yep. correct. That's correct. So no news is good news. Let's go ahead. Okay. So if you, if you guys uh, if you guys have, don't have any other question, we we can proceed ahead. So today what we'll be doing we'll be seeing that. Uh, uh, freight unit configurations. We have seen the overview of the configuration. Today we will be doing that configuration in in, in the uh, within the system. We'll be doing that uh, configurations, and we'll see that how that configuration would be impacting the uh, would be impacting the uh, generation of freight units. So that part we'll be doing, and then we'll also go ahead and see the uh, manual planning. How the manual planning need to happen, and how we need to. Oh, set up the cockpit for same. So today we will be actually doing the freight unit configuration in the system. We will create a new freight unit. We will create a freight unit building rule. We will create a condition for a freight unit building rule. And, uh, and based on that freight unit building rule, we will be seeing how that uh, deliveries are getting split into different ones. Okay, how that and this uh, uh, Adi, uh, so this config you will be focusing on the objective of uh, um, objective of embedded TM, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it would be more pro from whatever the config we are doing, how it impacts your cycles and all. So whatever we discussed yesterday, which were like a freight unit, then how the freight units are getting created when we set certain limits and all. So that is what we are going to see today, how that going to work in the system. Um, so there are, I uh, just wanted to highlight certain points here. The freight unit building rule has three parameters. Uh, consolidate as much as possible, consolidate per item and consolidate per uh, requirement. <clears throat> and we will have the breakup or limiting factor, which will be splitting or creating multiple freight units if the volume is increased more than that. So that one we will be doing. 
and uh, the condition technique which is uh, something used by uh, by uh, what do you say the a tm system as brf plus framework so that we will be uh, i will be showing you that so that uh, you guys would be having uh, acquaintances and you would be able to work on that one so let's go into the system and check the freight unit uh, configuration so i'm going into the uh, standard uh, system the sap system and of course for configuration i have to go into img side of it so under there transportation management and under that planning under planning freight unit that's where the defined freight unit types would be done so as of now what i am going to do is i will use the standard one copy it and make a create my own freight unit so i am creating uh, the freight unit type called yad1 and ad01 freight unit okay so just to have a differentiation from other freight units so i am putting that one so this is not going to be the default type so this is like <clears throat> if system is not able to find out any uh, freight unit building rule or other aspects so it will do take out uh, use this freight unit type as an default one so i don't want that one to happen as an y81 so i'm removing that uh, draw number immediately when i create a new freight unit the freight unit interval number in system I'm using FU. I want the document to be deleted and I want the changes to be tracked. So I'm not going to change that. Okay. Uh, yesterday we talked about the pickup and delivery windows where the time uh, premature stay and uh, delayed stay which are allowed. So I'm using the standard one everything to be copied from there okay uh, then i'm going down and uh, so that should be the major thing which i wanted to create here uh, there is a default strategy i have to assign is a chaco strategy Chaco meaning change controller strategy. <laughs> so that's a, a default Chaco strategy. Any document change would be updated in my document. So that's what I wanted to update here in the configuration. The direct shipment option here, I can use something like whenever my freight unit is there, I can create a specific freight order document which uh, I can assign it over here. So the whether you use an optimizer or any other program system will create that freight order document type. As of now, I'm not creating it this for time being, but uh, we might be uh, updating it back afterwards once we have this uh, freight order type configured. Okay, so this is what my freight unit type would be created okay so of course i have to save that and i am going to create it as a seo type creation okay so using the standard one for my own creation okay so if you go into that details and uh, Adi, uh, what are the main important factors that we need to remember when we are doing this config because there are so many uh, fields <laughs> inside it so yeah. 
Actually, we need to understand what is quite important and what is okay if it doesn't have. I know it will not be uh, it will not be fair on us to ask you explain each and every field. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this one pickup and delivery window that's where uh, important point you have to be uh, focusing on. The second one is uh, uh, as of now we don't have a output or from freight unit there are no further output uh, things which would be required so uh, that is not something required but uh, this one default org units that you can have uh, created based on your organizational requirements so these are specific to your organization so generally these are something you have to focus and so suppose if you if you specify a org group here, so this will be only relevant to that particular uh, uh, org group. Freight unit, yeah. Oh, okay, but uh, from a stand so, standpoint or a consulting standpoint, do you recommend uh, different freight unit types to multiple uh, uh, sales orgs and purchase orgs? Yeah, because requirements are based on that one, right? Generally uh, specific. Let's say I am talking about differentiation of planning and execution perspective. Domestic freight units, uh, some other group is going to manage and the overseas meaning uh, sea or air okay. thing, that one would be executed by some another execution group because it will require a multiple stages to be tracked. So that uh, organizational unit would be different. That's now, typically what from, would be. From the, from the configuration or planning standpoint, like the how you design the solution. So the, a, uh, do, you, do you separate freight unit types based on the uh, mode of transport or it doesn't go that way? It's not mode of transport because mode of transport is so totally different. It will come when you create a freight document. Freight okay. unit is still the basic thing where, where, where you are capturing from where, what, and when. These three things basically captured by freight units. So that's would be there. Okay. okay. Uh, next one would be the change controller strategy because uh, how you want the changes to be updated in your document. As of now, I'm using any changes in the previous document getting updated into my freight unit, but uh, you can have that control as well. You say that, no, I don't want any changes. Once the requirement has been created, I will not be able, to, I don't want any changes back. But that is hardly the way you want to do because this is very initial stage. So uh, you always want that changes to be available. Uh, is it, additional, is it, is it like that uh, we have created a delivery mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, if the changes in the delivery should impact my freight unit or not, is that is the that strategy? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, okay. Is there any case that where I should restrict or is there any business scenario where I should not be going for that, that uh, changes in my delivery should not move to uh, freight units? Generally, no, because that's very initial stage of the document. So uh, I will not suggest anything like uh, no changes to be updated, but uh, uh, certain, uh, certain case scenario. So when we talk about the ocean scenario where you have to do the bookings beforehand. Out of three legs, the main uh, carriage is something which needs to be scheduled first and has to have given a high priority because if we miss that schedule, it's going to be a long delay for the delivery promise. So uh, in that case, people don't want this requirement to be changed, but as I said, it would be once that planning or freight unit has been created and transferred the requirement into a freight document. After that, you don't want these changes to be done. But till that, you should be having that one updated. So if 
that can be handled with this change strategy determination condition and here you can create a condition and tell system that once the status of the uh, document is planned don't do any update on the document so that can be done via this one 